Welcome to FY Idaho, formerly Legislative Watch. I'm your host, Elizabeth Allen Hodge, and in the studio today, it's my pleasure to have as our guest, Mr. Art Thompson, CEO of the John Birch Society. Prior to joining the John Birch Society, Mr. Thompson was active in infiltrating Marxist organizations in the Pacific Northwest. He worked with the state chairman of the American Legion's Committee on Un-American Activities and the Seattle Police Intelligence Squad investigation. He, along with his colleagues, were instrumental in thwarting many terrorist and communist plans in the area. Art dedicated himself to local community by serving as a member of the city council, as a chairman of the Chamber of Commerce, and as interim chapter leader for the Christian Coalition. Mr. Thompson has a long history of public speaking appearances and has done many speaking tours for the JBS. He's come to the Treasure Valley to present a speech entitled, Exposing Terrorism. Welcome, Art. Well, thank you very much, Elizabeth. Well, before we begin on uh, talking about your speech, um, there's a lot of people that I know over the years who tell me that they know this and that about the John Burt Society, <laughs> and um, really, uh, it's based on just things that they've heard. I'd, I'd like you to tell people exactly who the John Burt, or what the John Burt Society is and how it got started. Well, the John Burt Society is basically, uh, fundamentally, an organization of people who have uh, organized to protect the Constitution of the United States and the independence of the American people. That's the bottom line. Now, it gets a little more complicated than that, but that's basically it. Our motto is less government, more responsibility, and with God's help, a better world. And by less government, we have always felt that we have too much government. I think that's becoming obvious to everyone now under the current situation that government is becoming involved in everything. But you see, we've seen this pattern over the years. And so we feel that every time that government gets involved a little more, then the people lose a little of their freedom and the responsibility to do those things in their community that is their responsibility as a private citizen, not government. Uh, so the more you give responsibility to government, the less responsibility and freedom the individual has. This has always concerned us. So we have been involved in trying to, get un to, to do a duality of, of tasks. One, lower the size of government, but also get people to understand that they have a responsibility to assume those things that need to be done in their local community as local citizens. If something has to be done by government, then it should be done by the lowest common denom denominator of government, the city, the county. Government closest to the people. That's right, closest to the people. More answerable to the people, mm -hmm. therefore, and with citizen involvement. And so those are some of the things that we've tried to do. But at the same time, we have said that there's a concerted effort in this country to, to bring government to the point of rule rather than governance. And so there are, we've always said that there is a group of individuals who want to rule us, mm -hmm. uh, not just simply, uh, you know, the altruistic aspect of going into government to serve. Mm -hmm. They want to go into rule. And I think that that is becoming more obvious to a, a larger segment of the population today. When the John Birch Society first started, that was a relatively unknown thing. I mean, people didn't recognize it as much. What they did recognize was the danger of communism, and that's primarily how I got involved originally. This goes back to the late uh, Late 50s, 50s, early 60s. And uh, as a young man, I got involved in, in the early 60s, in the Goldwater campaign, if you will. And, uh, and so our main th problem was a communist infiltration in the United States. It was a lot worse than what was ever being reported. You had the McCarthy area, uh, era, excuse me, which, uh, you know, was used by the mass media to discredit anti-communism. But, but there's still a reward out there for, for anybody who can prove that McCarthy called anyone a communist who wasn't one. Mm. Nobody's ever been able to collect on the reward because he never said anything that wasn't true. He just didn't have the right continence to get away with saying it. Now, now when this started, um Tell us who it was that started it. Robert Welch. Okay. He had a vision. You see, uh, when you study history and, and you really look at history, uh, you'll discover that there have been two forces involved 
uh, in trying to uh, subjugate the people. One's an evil force and one's a collective force, in other words, collectivism. Uh, they haven't always been unified, but uh, sometimes they have. And they have always had a war against individualism. Now, the individualist doesn't want to collectivize. He wants to be left alone, right? <laughs> he wants to go about to do his, 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 the things that he does, whether he farms or he's a salesman, a truck driver or whatever. He just wants to be an individualist. The collectivist wants to collectivize everything. Mm -hmm. So they tend to organize, group up. The individual, individualist doesn't usually. So he almost always loses in civilization after outnumbered. civilization. <laughs> he's outnumbered. And he's disorganized. Right. Uh, all through history, truth has been truth. But it has never stood up to a lie very well because truth is rarely organized. The lie is organized by those people who want to rule, whether it's a Julius Caesar uh, or whether it's a Stalin or Lenin or whatever it may ha Hitler, whatever it may happen to be. King George. King George. <laughs> Well, that's very interesting because much of what you're saying about the John Birch Society sounds like it's coming right from our founding fathers. Well, basically that's it. We, when we say we want to preserve the Constitution, what me, we mean is the Constitution as written with its original intent. In other words, not interpreted by some judge. It's, it, there is no interpretation. It's right there in black and white. Anybody can under, read and understand the Constitution in its simplicity. It is a document that was put together by our forefathers not to rule us, but to tell government what it could and could not do. Well, in fact, it, it's so interesting because one of the words that I hear all the time associated with the John Birch Society is conspiracy. Yes. And the things that you've said speak to the conspiracy that our founding fathers knew King George had and so it, it doesn't sound so mysterious when you put it the way that you're... No, it isn't mysterious. In fact, our forefathers did refer to a conspiracy by the British government to subjugate us because they were literally taking away our freedoms at that point. We had grown up in a, in a, in a system of liberty mm -hmm. and the ratcheting up of all the regulations and the taxation and uh, guilt before innocence and all of that that was going on by the King George government. Uh, it was a conspiracy that they saw happening. And they referred to it as a conspiracy, yes. if you read what they said. Uh, a conspiracy is nothing more than two or more people that get together for an evil purpose uh, and keep it a secret from the rest of the population. That doesn't mean that every group that gets together in secret is a conspiracy if it isn't for evil, if it's for good, of course, why would it be secret? Mm -hmm. You might ask that question, and a valid one. But uh, generally speaking, if you take a look at, at almost every court case that the federal government files, what's one of the included charges? Conspiracy. Mm -hmm. And yet, supposedly, we're supposed to think that conspiracy doesn't exist on a large scale. If you look at the communists, you look at the socialists, you look at the Nazis, mm -hmm. uh, so on and so forth, they were conspiracies. They conspired to rule. Uh, they did things to propel themselves into a position to react their own people, to allow them to rule. For instance, uh, one of the most famous is the Reichstag fire of Germany. The Reichstag was the, um, the Congress, if you will, of Germany. And so the Nazis went in and burned it down. And then they blamed it on the communists because the Nazis and the communists were always going like this for power in Germany. They blamed it on the communists and then declared a national emergency and used that national emergency of that terrorist act to subjugate or react the German people into standing still for a totalitarian government in the name of that emergency. It had to have been all pre-planned. It was a conspiracy. It was all ready to go. All they had to do was light the match, and then they... So you're defining conspiracy as any time uh, one or two or more people get together and they plan evil against another... Others, uh, others. yes. Okay. Now, that could be a bank robbery. Sure. Or it could be to take over the government. Or, yeah, or, and as our and founding anything fathers. anything in between. All yeah. right. Well, when we come back from the break, we'll be talking some more with um, Mr. Art Thompson, CEO of the John Birch Society. I'm Elizabeth Allen Hodge. The program is FY Idaho.